hyperpituitarism. Hyperpituitarism is the deficiency of one or more of the anterior pituitary hormones resulting in the insufficient stimulation and therefore insufficient hormonal output of the respective target glands. The target gland dysfunction is referred to as secondary deficiency, indicating that the pituitary gland is the source of the problem. Causes Major causes of hyperpituitarism can be divided into pituitary or hypothalamic diseases. Pituitary diseases are mass lesion for example pituitary adenomas, other benign tumors, cysts. Pituitary surgery. Pituitary radiation. Infiltrative lesions for example sacoiosis, hemochromatosis. Postpartum pituitary necrosis or Sheehan syndrome. Apoplexy. Hypothalamic diseases are mass lesions for example benign craniopharyngiomas and malignant tumors. Radiation for example for CNS and nasopharyngeal malignancies. Infiltrative lesions for example sarcoidosis, Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Trauma from fracture of skull base. Infections for example tuberculous meningitis. Clinical features. Clinical manifestations of hyperpituitarism depend on the pituitary hormones involved, which may be one, a few, or all, called panhyperpituitarism. The rapidity and severity of the deficiencies, and the age of the patient at onset. Signs and symptoms of hyperpituitarism are often subtle. Therefore, recognizing hyperpituitarism depends on knowing the clinical circumstances in which it can occur and recognizing the features of each potential hormonal deficiency. In addition, patients in whom the hyperpituitarism is due to a cell mass may also have symptoms related to the mass, such as headache, visual loss, or diplopia. The presentations of patients with deficiencies of those hormones that control target glands are often similar to the presentations of patients with primary deficiencies of the target gland hormones they control, with some notable exceptions. Secondary Hypothyroidism Clinical features of secondary hypothyroidism are similar to those of primary hypothyroidism and include fatigue, decreased energy, constipation, weight gain, dry skin, coarse hair, hoarseness, cold intolerance, facial puffiness, impaired memory or concentration, bradycardia, and a delayed relaxation phase of the deep tendon reflexes. Routine laboratory testing may show hyponatremia and normochromic, normocytic anemia. Secondary adrenal insufficiency Clinical features of secondary adrenal insufficiency are similar to those of primary adrenal insufficiency with some notable exceptions. Both can produce fatigue, anorexia, weight loss, nausea, vomiting, weakness, headache, abdominal pain, orthostatic hypertension, low-grade fever, hyponatremia, and eosinophilia. However, in secondary adrenal insufficiency, the potassium level is normal because all aldosterone secretion is not impaired. In addition, hyperpigmentation is absent because corticoteropin levels are not elevated. Secondary hypogonadism Clinical features of secondary hypogonadism depend on the patient's sex and age at onset. In children, it presents as delayed or absent puberty in both sexes. Adult males present with fatigue, decreased libido, Erectile dysfunction, gynecomastia, and physical examination may reveal diminished facial and body hair, decreased muscle mass and soft testes. Adult females present with menstrual irregularities, amenorrhea, infertility and other symptoms of estrogen deficiency for example, hot flashes and vaginal dryness. Long-term hypogonadism causes osteoporosis in both sexes. Growth Hormone Deficiency The effect of growth hormone deficiency is also dependent on the age at onset. In children, manifestations are growth arrest, short stature and sometimes, hyperglycemia. In adults, the features include lack of vigor, decreased exercise tolerance, a high percentage of body fat, decreased psychological well-being, 
and a deleterious lipid profile that may increase the risk of cardiac mortality. Prolactin deficiency. Isolated prolactin deficiency is rare. The only known clinical manifestation of prolactin deficiency is the inability to lactate after delivery. Diagnostic testing. The diagnosis of hyperpituitarism depends on history taking, physical examination and on the results of specific laboratory testing. Secondary hypothyroidism is diagnosed by a low T4 level, and a low or inappropriately normal TSH concentration. Secondary adrenal insufficiency is more difficult to identify because of the pulsatile secretion, diurnal rhythm and stress response of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. In general, a morning serum cortisol level of less than 3 micrograms per deciliter on two or more occasions, and a normal or subnormal result on a cosentropin stimulation test indicate adrenal insufficiency. A serum ACTH value not higher than normal is inappropriately low and establishes the diagnosis of secondary adrenal deficiency. A value higher than normal documents primary adrenal insufficiency. However, in suspected pituitary disease, findings on these tests may be indeterminate. More specific dynamic testing of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis may be necessary. Secondary hypogonadism causes low estradiol or testosterone levels along with a low or inappropriately normal luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone concentrations. Measurement of basal serum growth hormone concentration does not reliably distinguish between normal and subnormal growth hormone secretion. However, growth hormone secretion can be assumed to be subnormal if the patient has organic pituitary disease. Deficiencies of ACTH, TSH, and gonadotropins. And either an age specific low serum IGF1 concentration or a subnormal growth hormone response to our gene and GHRH stimulation. Prolactin deficiency is determined mainly by a history of inability to lactate. Patients may, in the postpartum period, have a serum prolactin concentration that is inappropriately low and not be able to nurse. Routine testing is not currently done, as it is difficult to differentiate low from normal serum prolactin concentrations, and there is no standardized test of prolactin reserve. When hyperpituitarism has been established clinically and biochemically, magnetic resonance imaging of the pituitary is usually needed to identify the specific lesion. Treatment approaches. Treatment of hyperpituitarism consists of hormone replacement therapy. Efficacy of treatment should be evaluated clinically and biochemically. When the proper dose of replacement hormone has been identified, frequent adjustment is usually unnecessary, except in the case of glucocorticoid therapy during illness, when doses are increased. Lifelong follow-up is necessary in all patients with hyperpituitarism. Secondary adrenal insufficiency. This is treated with oral glucocorticoid replacement using hydrocortisone, prednisone or other glucocorticoid in an amount and timing to mimic the normal pattern of cortisol secretion. Mineralocorticoid replacement is not necessary in secondary adrenal insufficiency because the renin angiotensin aldosterone system is unaffected by pituitary failure. Secondary hypothyroidism. Patients requiring treatment for this should undergo evaluation and if necessary, treatment for adrenal insufficiency before T4 therapy is started. T4 increases catabolism of cortisol and can precipitate adrenal crisis in a patient with untreated adrenal insufficiency. Secondary hypogonadism. In men with gonadotropin deficiency, testosterone replacement is indicated when fertility is not desired. Men with secondary hypogonadism who wish to become fertile may be treated with gonadotropins if they have pituitary disease or with either gonadotropins or gonadotropin releasing hormone if they have hypothalamic GnRH deficiency. If fertility is not a goal, women with hypogonadism should be treated with cyclic estrogen progesterone to reproduce normal menses and preserve bone mass.
gonadotropin or pulsatile GnRH therapy may be used when ovulation induction and fertility are the goal. Growth hormone deficiency. Due to conflicting evidence so far concerning improvements in the sense of well-being, muscle strength, and serum lipids, growth replacement therapy in adults is not recommended as routine treatment. Audio Jungle Audio Jungle